DoorDash is hacked, you can now permanently jailbreak your iPhone, and an update on SIM card vulnerabilities, because yes, there is more than one. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for October 1st, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. I have big news. I am keynoting at the Texas Cyber Summit in about two weeks, and I would love to see you there. If you want to go and you are in need of assistance, follow me on Twitter. I'm at snubs, that's at S-N-U-B-S, for a voucher code for a free ticket to the event. There's a link to the tweet with all the information down below, so just make sure to click that, follow me on Twitter, and then read the details for the free ticket. Also, I will likely try to get a group together to go to a bar that weekend on the San Antonio Riverwalk, so check my Twitter for up-to-date information on that. And now, on to the news. Thank you so much to Joel on Patreon for sending in this story. In a blog post published on Thursday by the San Francisco-based food delivery company, which is called DoorDash, the brand announced that earlier this month they became aware of a hack on their platform that affects about 4.9 million users, merchants, and drivers. DoorDash allows users to get food delivered from a choice of restaurants in their local area by delivery drivers, which are called Dashers. They operate in 4,000 plus cities in the US and Canada with an undisclosed total user base. DoorDash explained that the breach occurred due to a third party service provider on May 4th, 2019. About four months later, they discovered this breach. That means that whoever gained access in May could have kept access through September. They took immediate action to block access by an unauthorized party and they began reaching out to customers. Dashers and consumers affected must have signed up on or before April 5th, 2018. If you signed up after that date, you are not affected. Data potentially leaked includes profile information such as names, email addresses, delivery addresses, order history, phone number, and hash and salted passwords. The last four digits for credit cards were exposed, but not full credit cards or CVVs. Some Dashers and merchants, i.e. the restaurants, had the last four digits of their bank account numbers exposed as well. 100,000 dashers also had their driver license numbers exposed. The company did not disclose what kind of hashing algorithm they currently use for credit cards though. Affected users are being notified directly by the company and they strongly advise customers to change their passwords even though they were encrypted. DoorDash also set up a phone line for support inquiries. None of the data potentially leaked has surfaced on the dark web yet and DoorDash did not disclose who the third-party service provider is that was hacked. Since it was a third-party service provider though, it's entirely possible that this hack could affect other companies that also rely on them. There are a lot of unanswered questions about this hack, and the blog post is pretty vague. If you are a customer of DoorDash, definitely reset your password and make sure that you are using a password manager. A security researcher released a very exciting exploit that can work on practically any Apple mobile product from almost the past decade, spanning iPhone 4S's all the way up to iPhone 10's. The researcher, who goes by the name Axiom X on Twitter, posted about the epic jailbreak on September 27th, dubbing it Checkmate. Checkmate offers up a permanent way to jailbreak an iOS device due to an unpatchable boot ROM exploit. Any phones running on the custom Apple chipsets from A5 all the way up through A11 are vulnerable, or exploitable depending on if you are a fan of jailbreaking. Boot ROMs refer to read-only memory, which holds the boot up or the startup directions for the device. The iPhone 4S runs the A5 chipset, while the iPhone 10 runs an A11 chipset. The chipsets can be exploited via Checkmate to grant the phone owner, or an attacker, full control over the device. As someone who got her hands dirty doing jailbreaks a decade ago, this is very exciting news. Jailbreaks allow a device owner to install third-party software, dual boot, and run custom firmware. They can help bug bounty researchers find new vulnerabilities in devices, since they would have more access to the parts of the device needed for research and reporting. It can also open up your device to potential vulnerabilities that Apple has protected consumers from with their restricted operating systems. 
Jailbreaks are still widely used for all sorts of devices, from jailbreaking a Nintendo console to jailbreaking Peloton bike tablets. But these are in software. Physical boot ROM jailbreaks are somewhat rare, especially for Apple. They are permanent and they cannot be patched, and if you need to fix a device after a jailbreak, it would require replacing the physical silicon chipset. For this reason, this kind of jailbreak is incredibly intriguing and sought after. Axiom X Checkmate Exploit is available on GitHub, but it does require decent technical skill to use. The researcher mentions this cannot be used on A12 and a13 chipsets yet, which are the newest from Apple. Now if you are worried about this being used by attackers on you, chances are you are safe since it does require physical access to the phone. An attacker would need to connect the phone via a USB cable to actually use the exploit to jailbreak it. If you use an older iPhone, ironically a new one just came out, but for security researchers and the jailbreaking community, Again, this is very exciting. You can check out the GitHub link below in the comments if you want to check it out yourself. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I am putting together the annual physical rewards for this year, so keep an eye on the updates on the Patreon page. Also, I wanted to start a security and privacy audio podcast as a part of the ThreatWire feed. That is my next Patreon goal, and it's a big one. So if you want to help, check out my community. The link is in the description below. Also, I wanted to say thank you again to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. Last but not least, chosen by Patreon patrons this week is an update to SIM vulnerabilities. I reported on SimJacker just a little bit ago. SimJacker is a vulnerability in SIM and eSIM cards that could allow an attacker to pull sensitive information off a device just by sending a specifically crafted bit of code via the SMS platform. We didn't know at the time how many were affected, nor had a way to check easily if your device was vulnerable. Now, a group of researchers researchers has developed a way to make this happen. Researchers at SR Labs tested 800 different SIM cards from 86 different countries to find out how many were actually vulnerable. They found this to be about 6%, with 3.5% of the total being vulnerable to a second issue. More on that in just a bit. Based on this data, calculations show the potential impact could be in the tens or hundreds of millions. SR Labs used their own tool, which is called SimTester, to track and find the flawed cards. In similar news, that second issue that affects 3.5% of SIMs tested is within another SIM toolkit, which comes pre-installed on a variety of SIM cards. The second problem was found by security researcher Lakatos, with the toolkit called the Wireless Internet Browser, or WIB for short. WIB is a browsing option used by 200 mobile operators around the world, including AT&T, T-Mobile, and a lot more. Lakatos found this back in 2015, but decided not to disclose it due to its complexity. The SimJacker attack can also be used with WIB to steal sensitive information from phones. SR Lab has released an Android app which is called Snoop Snitch, free in the Google Play Store to detect attacks on SIM cards, but this requires a rooted device with a Qualcomm chipset to work. Before I leave, I wanted to say thank you so much to Rosie and Jonathan who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much. You are both awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.